Alright guys, I'm gonna go over a few of the tips to explain like how I became a good builder, like the process I went through and stuff. Uh, so I have a bunch of notes here that I'm just gonna follow and go through and any questions and stuff you have, you can just post in the comments below. I'll put a link to all of these plugins and everything I'm using in the description so you can follow that. And yeah, let's just hop right into it. So uh, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is ditch the studio tools. The studio tools suck, okay? I'm, I'm being completely honest here. The studio tools are just so limited compared to like plugins like F3X and Studio Build Suite. And it's just like, it's gonna make your building like process a lot more difficult and more tedious. So yeah, first thing, you do not wanna use your uh, Roblox Studio to build, or you don't wanna use the studio tools. You only wanna use plugins. So the first plugin, or the first two plugins, I guess, uh, you can pick from that are the most popular that I know. If there's any others, then obviously just post them in the comments and I'll check them out and stuff. But uh, the first two, uh, F3X, which I have right here, that's my favorite, that's what I have on right now, or Studio Build Suite, or SPS, which is, I forgot who it was made by, but uh, a lot of EBR, uh, if you don't know them, uh, the elite, I think they're elite builders of Robloxia. They're a bunch of really, really good builders and a lot of them use uh, SBS. Uh, so since I only know really how to use F3X, I'm just gonna explain like the things you can do with F3X that you can't do with regular Studio, just to show you why you should use plugins. Uh, so first let's start with, uh, just explain Studio, the, fir the four basic tools that are up here, uh, select up here, move, scale, and rotate. So all of these, all of them, uh, move, rotate, scale, everything on the on the world axes, I think. Oh, no, I was wrong. It's the brick axes, but still. Uh, so I'll explain to you why this is kind of problematic for uh, compared to plugins. So first of all, for rotating, right? If I want to rotate, say, like if to make all these homes, I rotated a bunch of these like on their own local axes, like. I'll, uh, I'll show you an example of that right here, actually. Uh, let me just copy some bricks real quick. I'll just take this tree thing. Uh, I'll put it right here. Uh, all right, so if I copy and paste, damn it. <laughs> if I copy and paste a bunch of these, right? Uh, let's, let's get three of them. I'll rotate like a little bit. Whoops, rotate a little bit, and I'll rotate a little bit here. If I select all of these, with the studio tools, if I rotate, I can only rotate them as a group. I can only rotate them around this center right here. You can see where all the lines converge. That's the only place, or that's the only like, that's a center point that I can rotate around. So with uh, this plugin, F3X, uh, I can do that, rotate around that center point right here, or I can get the local axes of each one and rotate each individual thing on their own axes. This is really useful for uh, uh, see like when I'm making these uh, homes and stuff. I was just rotating each one of these individually. I put them all in different areas, rotate and then just copy and paste so I, you know, you can have like a, a, a sort of a city looking thing right here. Uh, the other thing too is you can rotate around a specific bricks axis. So if I wanted to rotate all of them around this thing, say I wanted to copy and paste and have all of them make like a sort of kind of circle around it, uh, I can copy them click this brick right here and rotate all of them around that same that same axis see like right instead of instead of rotating around the center I can rotate around this brick right here so that's really useful too uh, the next thing for rotating is also uh, you can rotate around an edge so if you want the brick to sort of stay connected then uh, you can use the rotate tool also so, uh, which is right here. I'll make another video about like, cause I'm going through a lot of hotkeys right now uh, that are, that I just memorize. But uh, I'll make a whole video on F3X if it's requested or possibly if not. But uh, anyways, uh, so let's go jump right into this. Uh, if I press C and I see this little X right here, this purple pinkish X, if I click this edge right here, then I can rotate these bricks around that specific, that specific edge. So I can make like a, a sort of circle looking thing uh, just by repeating this process over and over again. And then if I kept going, I can make like a, a full a full circle right here. Um, 
that's also really useful. Or even if I wanted to cheat, I could just get like a bunch of these, rotate or copy and paste that, click here, and then rotate around this way. So now I have like a sort of arch kind of thing. Uh, but yeah, so you can't do that with, I don't believe, I haven't actually checked in depth into these tools, but you can't do, I don't think you can do that with uh, Roblox Studio. Uh, and even if you can, uh, the other advantage to having a plugin is you have a bunch of hotkeys that just make your process a lot faster. So uh, I just memorized a bunch of these. So like if I wanted to copy and paste this real quick, I just press Shift C, drag it, Shift C, and then drag it again. So it's really easy. Or if I wanted to start resizing, I press X. And I can even press Enter to toggle between resizing from the uh, both sides or uh, resizing from here. Uh, if I press the the uh, that dash key or the underscore key, I can change the increments real fast. Instead of having to go in here, clicking a bunch of, uh, actually, I don't even know how to change it here. Is uh, Oh, here, in model, move and rotate, change, have to change the degrees and the the thing up here, I don't think there's a hotkey to just automatically go here. You have to actually go up here and click it. So that's another, it's not uh, It's not horribly useless, but it's a lot slower. So uh, yeah, you're really gonna wanna use a plugin. Um, another thing you can do, I'll just go run through each of these real quick and run through each of these options. So global lets you move it on the global axes, like the, uh, the, the world axes instead of following the bricks. That's why it's kind of off, as you can see. Uh, but the global axis stays the same for every single brick. Um, you'll, you'll probably use that a little bit more when you're actually building. It's kind of hard to explain specific scenarios when you're going to be using that, but yeah. Uh, the next thing is local. That's just like uh, the local axis, as it says, like which is around each individual part. So if I selected all these, which are all in different kind of orientations, they're all pointing different ways. If I move this, they all move on their own axes. Uh, or if I pick last, like the like from what's it called? Uh, rotation. Uh, it all moves on the same on the brick that you last selected. So if I click this one, I can move it like that. Or if I click this one, move it like that. Uh, yeah. And uh, so for resize, uh, let me just change those increments back to one real quick. Um, the first resize is just resizing, you know, regular part. Move, any of the sides, uh, up, down, whatever. Uh, then you can also resize both, which uh, you saw it a little bit earlier. You can resize it from the center of the brick, or you can resize it down to the center. So that's also really useful that I don't think you can do with Roblox Studio. Uh, again, these are all really good things to have, especially when you want to get really good at building that you should use a plugin for. I'm, I'm not really, I'm not saying that Roblox Studio is horrible, but if you really want to get advanced, if you want to get all these fine details and build faster, that's that's really the thing. If you want to build faster and more efficiently, you have to use plugins. It, Studio is just not efficient. Uh, the other thing that I like with F3X that I don't think Studio Build Suite has is I can edit all the properties of this brick from just the plugin itself. Like I don't have to go into this properties window over here and find, uh, here, I guess the best example is to get the surface tool. So on here, if I wanted to say I wanted to make this surface up here, I wanted to make it uh, studs or inlet or something on the top right here. So I don't know if that's actually a top. So I'll have to find like each one of these and guess through each guess and change each one of these things until I finally get inlets, right? Uh, oh, actually, oh, it kind of highlights it. I didn't know that. But uh, still, like I have to scroll down here, go find it. I have to click each one of these until I find the one that I'm looking for, and it, there it's top. Whereas with uh, F3X, right, I can just, uh, hold on, let me unselect this real quick. Uh, I can just click the side that I want. So I just click top, there, boom. I have this, and I can change it to inlets real fast. Uh, or if I wanted to change all of them, I can just change this to all, and I change all of it to inlets, all of it to smooth, whatever. Uh, here, if I want to change all of them, I would have to go through each individual one and change it. The same thing goes for like uh, for any of these properties that are in here. So uh, let's see, color. All right. So here, I, I guess I can, if I really want to, I can go here, find the color I want, and pick it. Or I can just press V and click uh, one of these part uh, colors right here. This is that weird pink there. Uh, if I, uh, another useful thing, if I wanted to match the color of something else, so say I was making like a a bunch of these houses. So 
I guess a little bit of background for these houses. I copied them, pasted all of them as the same color. They were all of this color, I think, this, like kind of beige color. Uh, and then to copy the color of different of the different houses. Uh, so I would select the part that I want to copy, or to se select the part that I want to change the color of, and then I would hover over whatever part I want. Like uh, say I wanted to make it as green, right? Instead of having to find it, I would click all through these, click find the color here, or try to click this and match it. I can just uh, go here, press uh, hover over this, and press R, and then I get that color right there. Instead of having to like, I have to find, I have to find this part, see that's forest green, and then here they don't even tell you the name, so you have to kind of hover through everything until you find, oh, this one's forest green. It's a lot, again, plugins are a lot faster. Uh, the other thing too is uh, putting lights. So if I want to put a light in this brick right here, uh, with Studio, I mean with uh, F3X, I can just press U, which is the hotkey for the lighting tool, which uh, actually all the hotkeys show right here, so even if you're just learning, you can just like look through here and find it. Uh, now I have all the options for spotlight, point light, service light, right? So I can just add all of them real fast. I can edit everything in here, range, brightness, angle, shadows, which side is coming from, again, which is the same thing. I just click uh, whatever side I want the light to come out of and I can just remove it right there. Whereas with Studio, I would have to right click this, insert object, find whichever light I'm looking for. So I did a spotlight, so I have to look alphabetical order uh, here, spotlight. And then even after I added that, now I have to find like the face. This one doesn't highlight the face, which side, like, so you have to guess, uh, guess which side you want it to come out of. Then you would have to edit everything in here. Everything's all in this properties. I like, I like F3X because everything is in this plugin. Pretty much everything. I mean, there's probably a few exceptions, but you know, the exceptions are really, really small. So that's why, yeah, again, uh, that's why I like using F3X and that's why you should use a plugin. Now Studio Build Suite has, it's just, it's a little bit more compact. It, it shows up like a, as a little box up here. And it's a little bit harder to learn just because there's a tutorial uh, made by, I think, Raven Shield on YouTube about it, but uh, it doesn't cover everything about the actual plugin. Like, I was looking through the comments to try to figure out how he did a certain thing and he didn't explain it in the video. Okay, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying anything bad about Raven Shield. He's a good builder. He's, he's probably a better builder than me. But I'm just saying that, like, since there's no actual, you know, guide to Studio Build Suite, you kind of have to experiment on your own. Uh, whereas with F3X, you know, you have everything's explained here. If you hover over this stuff, you can like just read this stuff. You just scroll through here. It tells you what each of these do. Even if I miss something, it'll tell you all the little hotkeys and stuff that you can uh, that you can use to to master F3X. But yeah, so uh, I guess I'll just explain or I'll show you a brief demo of how some of these uh, things are useful here. So uh, first, let's change this to 0.5, which is the the increments that I use for this whole map. Everything's on 0.5. There's nothing smaller than 0.5. I don't think there might be 0.25, but it's rare. I I, I always try to stick to one increment just just to make it ease uh, make it a lot easier. Uh, so so uh, here okay so I made a bunch of these like shirts hanging from here to show whatever laundry in the medieval times or right. So if I wanted to do that, I'll show you how I did that really really fast. So I selected let's say I want a shirt here here here. Here, here, and no, no, let's make it a little bit different. Uh, here, and here. Uh, it's still the same. Whatever. Let's look at two. Okay, so uh, now if I press Shift C, which is a copy uh, hotkey, I'm not sure if they actually go over that in here, but uh, yeah, Shift Shift C is copy on uh, F3X. Uh, so yeah, the Shift C. Uh, then I change the increments here. Since I know these are all orientation, this is just experience. I know that these are all in the same orientation. I can change all their increments to the size of a shirt. So it's two by by two by two by one. And there we go. So now we have a bunch of these, right? So now I want to use local because I want each of these to move on their own axes. I don't want I don't want them to move on this shirt's axes because then they're going to be a little bit off. See, uh, I want them all to move on their own. That's when local comes in. And again, to make the sleeves, Shift C, copy. Uh, it, it's, it is kind of annoying that it moves over there, but I just left click here. Uh, move everything to the same to the same side. So see how these two were a different orientation than those? So those went to the right and these went to the left? It doesn't matter. So 
then you can just resize this since they're all on the same or I'm resizing from the same side it just happens that say for example that this is the left side that the left side of these bricks happens to be on this side just because they're rotated so it doesn't matter where they are if you're using the local axes uh, then I'll just copy and paste drag this to the other side you can see the top ones all moving to the left and boom now I have five shirts made real real fast now uh, to show you the, the little color thing that I did so I'll select this press V which is the hotkey for the colors and I'll so say I wanted these three shirts to all be that white color uh, highlight all three of these press R when I'm hovering over that white shirt and they all turn into this white beige kind of cream color uh, then I'll just fill it in by clicking each of these uh, so now I want this to be red R red here and then this one I guess I'll make it this yellow and uh, there real fast whereas if you was using if you were using studio that would take a lot longer just because you have to get each each individual shirt go in if you wanted to do the same resize thing that I did you'd have to go in here and change the size manually from here so I all resizes from the center and then you have to move each brick individually down on their own axis so it takes so long and uh, just finding the colors also would be really tedious because you'd have to match or I guess you don't have to match but if you wanted to match the colors you would have to look through here find the color in here and yeah it's a lot of work um, hold on let me look at my notes real quick uh, oh okay so with this with studio tools uh, the move I mean not the move copy and pasting if you did control C and V it control uh, it copies and pastes it on top right so that's kind of annoying you, you can use control D and it copies and pastes it into the same spot but again that's just really like see these are like things where they're just it doesn't make sense to copy and paste and have it appear on top control C should just like duplicate it right here but anyways Control C and V also uh, is that's just two hotkeys versus uh, Shift C just right here, drag and then I have it right there. Like uh, let me just explain that a little bit more. Like um, if I did Control C V, I don't understand why it has to go on top because that doesn't like when is there ever going to be a time when you're just going to want to Control C V until you make a tower, uh, whereas if I was if I really want to do the same thing I guess it'd take slightly longer but if you master it you can do it about the same speed you just uh, shift C and then just drag it up and if you wanted to make it even faster right so I can match the increments here for here I would have to find the increment thing right here move and it's just a lot harder to like, go up here and click that stuff here uh, so it's the size of seven if I wanted to keep moving it in increments of seven make it faster whoops whoops <laughs> that was resize uh, let me change that for the uh, for the move tool okay so I wanted to move in increments of seven now it's real fast I just get this and then I can just drag it up seven or 14 in this case and yeah it's a lot faster um, a bunch of the other things you can manipulate with uh, f3x is here uh, the anchor you can anchor stuff uh, you can change the material, the transparency, and reflectance. I mean, this is all right here, too. Basically, everything in here except for stuff like orientation, which you're probably never going to use, uh, uh, position, rot velocity, velocity, all these kind of things that are like mostly for games where you're going to be scripting stuff. And if you're scripting stuff, most of these are going to be dynamic and they're going to be changing anyways. So, yeah. Uh, you can't change the collision group ID with here uh, with uh, F3X. You can make it non can collide. I think that's K. Yeah, K. Uh, you can add fire, smoke, and sparkles to this brick. Uh, you can add decals with G or textures. Uh, I don't think you can add um, particles, but that should that should be something that they're probably planning on adding to this, just because it's such a it's such a like basic functions it'd be the same thing as adding a light and you just add like the little things to edit here but yeah uh, now uh, some of the other plugins that I like to use that I use for a lot of these roofs and stuff uh, is resize align right here I forgot who it's by but I'll put a description I'll put a link to it in the description uh, that just 
so say I wanted to make, I'll just make a quick example roof right here. Uh, whoops, uh, 0.5. Move this and, oh, okay. Uh, so at first all the roofs look like this and they're kind of like, uh, it looks kind of weird. Now you can try to m change these increments so that way these two will match the meet up or whatever. But um, that's just a lot of work. You can just use resize align. Uh, you can experiment with a bunch of these, but usually like 99% of the time you're just gonna be using outer touch. The other, like most of the other 1% is probably gonna be inner touch. These are gonna be kind of rare, but joint maybe. But uh, uh, these two are the most common use, or these three, these two up here and, and this one. Those are the most commonly used that I've seen. Uh, so then you just click one of these faces, click this, and they meet up. Now that's gonna mess up your your increments here. It's gonna make it super specific or whatever. But if it's not moving anyways, if you're not gonna if you're not gonna really use that part, it's like if it's just a roof, right? I'm not gonna be dragging or resizing this a lot. I'm not gonna be copying and pasting uh, this roof and trying to get it back into the the increments that I like. So it's just fine to leave it like that. And yeah, uh, the other thing that I use is reflect when I'm making something that's symmetrical. Uh, and then I want to like something complex and symmetrical. And I want to re just build half of it basically and uh, reflect it about that one brick. So that way it looks like a whole piece. Uh, I'll show you an example of that next time. I If you follow this project that I'm working on, which is Conquest. I'll put a link to that. Also, you can follow our Twitter at PaperKite Studio, no S at the end, at PaperKite Studio. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff on there that's just explaining this project and everything. Uh, there's a dragon, a red dragon on there. It should be in my images on there, but that dragon I built half of and just use this uh, reflect tool to, to uh, rotate it. So that way it would make a whole dragon. Uh, the other thing that I like to use is curve. Uh, that's how I made all of these ropes. Uh, let me just explain that a little bit. Uh, so all the uh, things are up here, all the uh, the values you can edit. Uh, line width, I always put 0.5. You can change that to whatever you want, but 0.5 is just, you know, you can see it. That everything in here is basically 0.5. Uh, so I just put 0.5 for that. Curve type, if you want to make hanging things, you want to use hyperbolic cosine. You probably won't really notice a difference. It, I, I mean, I guess if you make it big enough, you'll notice a difference. But uh, you want to use hyperbolic cosine, and that's just because that's the most realistic formula for making these curves. Uh, I, it's kind of hard to explain. I just learned it in a, a college calculus course. But yeah, you want to use hyperbolic cosine. Uh, gravity pool, you can play around with that. Uh, five was fine for me. I just left it on default. And this is, this is all five gravity. Uh, segments, depending on how laggy your place is, you probably will be fine with using between 10 and 15. Most of these are between 10 and 12. I think there's the first two I made are way over here. I think they're like 15 or something or 20. I don't know. But uh, yeah, after that, I just started using 10, 12. You get less detailed lines, but it doesn't really matter, especially for uh, like this kind of build. If it looked way too detailed, it would look weird anyways. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it for curve. Oh, uh, point mode, there's mouse dot hit, which is uh, wherever your mouse is, that's where it's gonna make the first point and then you click uh, on the next point. Oh, I just noticed something, but uh, I'll fix this after. Uh, the other one is, I, I don't know how it's, what it's called, but it's, let's see, mouse dot target. That's the one where it, res or it puts the curve at the center of the brick, of whatever brick you're selecting. But uh, hold on, let me fix this color real quick. This is really bothering me. Uh, again, this is the, the tool that I like to use. Uh, okay. Anyways, that's pretty much it with uh, plugins. Uh, SBS, I'll probably play around with that a little bit more. I might make a video on SBS after I, you know, I, I get more familiar with it. But for now, uh, this is pretty much it for plugins. This is the reason why you want to use plugins. There's so much more you can do with them. Uh, if you skip to the end of this or to the end of this video and went to this part, uh, the uh, brief exclamation or explanation is 
you want to use plugins because Studio is really inefficient. Uh, there's just so many things that you have to look through. It's like you can change. Yeah, you get a little bit more detail with the Studio, I guess. But uh, it would take a lot longer, especially like for things like this or for most builds you're going to be doing. If you're not going super detailed anyways, actually, even if you are going super detailed, you're going to want to use plugins because it just gives you a lot more control. It makes everything a lot faster. You get the same amount of control as you do with the Studio tools. And it's just a lot faster. There's just no reason why you shouldn't be using plugins when you want to get like a really good at building. Now, if you're just fine with the studio, I'm, I'm again, I'm not telling you that studio sucks. I'm just saying that uh, the plugins, if you really want to get projects done faster, you want to make it easier on yourself, you have to use, or you should use plugins, right? Um, but that's pretty much it for this video. Uh, the next video, we're going to go over, uh, let's see, I'll look at my notes real here. Uh, concept art design and thought process so i'll just go through things that like that go through my head when i'm building when i'm designing things this is the kind of stuff i'm just gonna go through like literally step by step what i think of uh when i'm building so just to give you a, a sort of heads up for uh how you should approach building especially if you want to get really good if you have a, if you have like a goal of getting into like ebr or something i know that used to be my goal but uh yeah so Anyways, thanks for watching. Again, all the links and stuff will be posted in the description. Comment any questions, any comments, uh, anything you have to say about this video and how I can improve it and stuff. And yeah, thanks for watching.